Okay, just been sitting back here watching the uh, storms in the Tulsa area. There were a couple of tornado warnings issued for some quick uh, possible touchdowns, but they lasted very short and they died by the time I would have got my stream up because the there's only literally two minutes long. And then I've been kind of watching those and nothing's happened since. And then now we've got the, the Far East winds come back alive. So I'm going to go ahead and cover that one. Uh, so if you're watching me in the Tulsa area, we're looking uh, around the Pegs region. This is south and east here in eastern Oklahoma. So this is going to be north of Tahlequah. Uh, the one storm down here around Claremore and Coweta, that, that thing had died out so fast. It, it, was, it basically died out as quick as it came. Uh, we'll see if something new develops in this area south uh, of Bixby here. But until then, there's, there's been nothing in this region for a while. The one in Pegs, though, continues to intensify. In the last couple of scans, uh, it picked up a good circulation. Um, sorry, I had the, the map going. Uh, good circulation right here coming in the town of Pegs. So make sure you be in your shelters if you're in Pegs. This will be coming through right now on Highway 82. Uh, this is a little hook echoes we talk about. So this is the area of circulation coming in. And there is enough rotation to indicate a, um, a likely a tornado touchdown in this region. Whether or not it's going to be strong, it's another deal. The, the algorithms are saying a very strong EF1 tornado, um, possibly a weak EF2. So again, take it serious. This is coming right along Highway 82 in Peg, so make sure you're in your shelter if you're not already. Uh, let's see here. It's true, another uh, calculation. So yeah, still strong EF2. 81 uh, week excuse me still strong EF1 uh, week EF2 on the scale of percentages as far as the wind speeds are concerned by Doppler radar estimates so this is south of Locust Grove so if you're in pegs being your shelter after that there's no major communities for a while eventually we'll head up toward north of Oaks and north of Kansas uh, but until then right now in pegs really good indication that um, we've got a debris ball developing so what that typically means is that it's uh, hit something. We can check the uh, cross-correlation coefficient and uh, verify that here in a second. And it looks, uh, looks to be the case. So I've centered the radar on the debris ball. And you see this blue region? That basically means debris. So this tornado has moved through PEG and has now hit um, something, um, unfortunately, in that area. And that's causing debris to be picked up by the radar. I do not like seeing that. I think that's the first time I've seen this signature. Even the ZDR values are very low. They're down around zero. So again, that's high confidence um, with complete certainty that uh, there's been uh, some type of damage going in. So it's hit something either round pegs or just northeast of there. Um, of course, we do have the town itself uh, that it went right over. And then you've got this large tree area. My hope is, is that it wasn't that strong when it came over pegs. And what we're seeing on the uh, radar is basically just a swath of trees that have been um, buzz cut. So that is my hope. Otherwise, uh, things may not be too, going too well um, east of pegs or in pegs right now. Okay, so again, this is for a tornado warning that is actually south and east of Tulsa. Uh, let's see, algorithms are, where are they now? up around still a strong EF1 weak EF2 tornado so moving in the weather service just now put out a purple uh, shading if you remember earlier I talked about what that means it basically means a tornado has been sighted or debris ball has been confirmed in, with the debris signature so tornado warning remains in effect until 11 for southeastern Mays and north central Cherokee counties Confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado located near Pegs moving northeast at 50. It's a quick mover. It's a radar confirmed tornado, a damaging tornado. If you're in the path, obviously seek shelter. And Pegs and Rose are the two towns involved. Um, so unfortunately, this is probably the biggest tornado of the uh, state. It might even be bigger than the one that we had down there in Mangum uh, earlier this evening. Just based off the radar structure alone, because the radar structure it wasn't even like this for that storm. So that means this one's uh, quite a bit more potent on, on the radar anyway. Uh, let's see here. Okay, got a new update. Unfortunately, the radar's having a tough time with the wind speeds being so chaotic. Uh, it actually folded over on the scale. They're going to have to change the Nyquist velocity on that to get an accurate guesstimation uh, as far as the uh, what the wind speeds are doing. Spectrum width is off the chart in this area, which means there's a lot of variance 
particles moving all different directions. Uh, again, the debris ball is still there and the reflectivity. So all indications are we've got a pretty substantial tornado that continues in that area. That's unfortunate. Okay, I'm going to switch radar sources here with this guy. We'll do a storm track on it. Like I said, we kind of mentioned the only two communities involved, but uh, we'll see what else comes up. We've got Oaks at 1055, Kansas at 1059, and Colcord at 1108. Now, it won't last that long, you know, by the time it gets to Colcord. And most of these haven't lasted very long at all. They've been very short-lived. So we'll see how this one kind of materializes here in a moment. Just a very incredible um, presentation as far as the Doppler radar is concerned, unfortunately. All right, let's see what we got here. Yeah, it's going to be difficult for me to analyze the wind speeds on the fly until the Nyquist velocity gets cleaner. What happens is uh, the wind speeds get too strong and they, they flip over to another color palette and then they kind of get a little garbled. So it makes it more difficult for me just to point query and see wind speeds. But it doesn't matter. It's a strong tornado. It's probably a large tornado. It's been doing damage. Uh, the debris signature is still there. So very hard core debris ball with the blue still indicating it's got stuff flying all around the air that's not raindrops. In other words, it's trees, can be homes, businesses, animals, you name it. Uh, but that's what the radar can do nowadays with dual polarization. It can tell the difference between those two uh, outcomes. So unfortunately, it's a dire situation over here um, that went through the town of Pegs and uh, just moments ago. The good news is that the strongest it has been has been after pegs. That's where it really picked up in intensity. And the other thing is it's not over any property that has homes on it. It is over nothing but an open tree field. That is the best place for this outcome because trust me, this has been the strongest trader on the radar and you definitely want this over an open field, not over uh, neighborhood homes. Incredible though. All right, well, let's, uh, let's hope it weakens by the time it does encounter either farm homes or another community. But uh, this is an impressive supercell storm, the strongest one of the entire night. Uh, trail warning continues for southern Delaware County, southeastern May, southeastern Cherokee until 1130. A confirmed large and dangerous tornado located five miles south of Rose, moving northeast at 50. This is a particularly dangerous situation. Um, take cover. So eventually here we're going to have Jay, Kansas, Leach, Rose, uh, Lake Ucha State Park, Colcord, Oaks, Twin Oaks, and Dodge. Maybe not necessarily for the actual tornado part, but for the actual supercell part as well. Let's see, tornado approaching Highway 412. Yeah, we'll be coming up on 412 here momentarily. And crossing over, it looks like uh, 412 and maybe up around uh, County Road 4540. The current location of this, by the way, now that it's out over those trees, we're finally getting into some road networks again. It's going to be approaching County Road 4490 and 4495, just north of East Road 610 and between there and East Road 600. So that's just got an update here for that, and so that's where it's currently at now. It's just now East Road 600 and 4495. So it's getting from that open field with trees to now a road network, which of course now leads probably to some farm homes. Let's see. Uh, still over trees at this point. Uh, there are a couple little tiny 
farm homes looks like just southeast of there. Uh, we still have more trees to go, occasional farm homes, so I hope all these people are in adequate shelter right now. Then any cars that are on 412, uh, that's going to be a mess. A uh, large tornado EF2, you know, caliber crossing over a main interstate is going to cause some problems. Uh, main highway is going to cause some problems. So this should pass west of Leach. Uh, looks like the way things are going right now. Let's see. The trajectory is kind of in a north northeast fashion. Uh, it might go right over Leach. Um, so Leach, of course, being your shelters and Rocky Ford being your shelters. Um, if you're up on 420, you got to get out. Uh, 412, you got to you got to get out of this area. Uh, the other storm we talked about down southwest of there. Uh, still don't see anything for that uh, train of warning. There's nothing uh, on the radar of any consequence. So we're going to stay focused on this one that we're looking at in far northeast Oklahoma. Nothing else over the state, by the way, of any concern at all. So, um, let's take a look at a couple things. Let's see, where is this? So Rocky Ford, again, stay in your shelters, leech stay in your shelters. This particular tornado will be coming up on 412 here momentarily. Uh, still got a large debris ball with it on the radar reflectivity. Now, I will say this, the, the density of the blue of the cross-correlation coefficient with time has diminished as we go through steps. There's a lot less blue. So what I'm hoping is the initial damage path, the part of the damaging that the trail is causing has stopped and the residual blue we're seeing kind of as being widened out further is old debris being thrown around, nothing new is being generated. That's the hope with the way I'm interpreting this. Uh, looks like, yeah, the, the, the circulation, although still there, has weakened quite a bit compared to what it was just a few frames ago. So let's hope that that's, the, uh, that's what the outcome is actually occurring. That would make sense. Uh, place marker. We're still at strong EF1 tornado at this point in time, um, but not an EF2. So it has come down in strength and intensity whew, just in time. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the weather service is saying it may be cycling. And when a, when a storm cycles, it, it has to, you know, get weaker, then kind of get its act back together and start all over. So that might be a good thing here for you guys coming into Leech and heading over 412. A lot can change really quickly on these situations. All right, so the current uh, track of this, putting it location is uh, North 4520 Road, which runs due south out of 412. So it's basically crossing over that road, and then it'll be crossing over 4530 after that, and then crossing over business 412 at Leach, and then 412 itself. So that's the path this is going to take. So stay in your shelters until that moves through.
Okay, so also what you're noticing, well, I'll show you what to notice. Trade emergency is coming for leech. In other words, the Weather Service wants to be very careful with that and in utmost um, importance. But the wind field is spreading outward this way and this way. In other words, it's not becoming concentric, it's expanding. And what that means is it's broadening and weakening. So remember, as an ice skater, you go faster when you bring your arms in together, and you twist a lot faster. When they're out, they're slower. So same thing kind of with the storm system in this particular area. So in other words, like when they said recycling, it was weakened quite a bit, and it has to bring these winds back in closer. So this couplet that we had, this very tight couplet, is now expanding too far wide, which makes it a very wide circulation. Now you can still have a little tornado embedded within that, but you would not have a very strong tornado as you would with all that energy confined into a one mile radius versus now spreading it across a four mile radius. So this is moving through leech. So um, if you have friends or family there, hopefully they are seeking shelter right now. Uh, if they, they haven't, they've literally got seconds to do it. Okay, so a new um, warning came out. Now, this is the first time tonight this has been issued. I had mentioned to you that we will get a purple shading that will go to a black line when things get uh, into the tornado emergency situation. And so that's what's gonna happen with this. So we'll read this here for you. Uh, Trado emergency for leech. Uh, Trado morning remains in effect until 11.30 for Southern Delaware and Northeastern Cherokee counties. 10.48, a confirmed large and destructive tornado was located near leech, moving northeast at 45. Tornado emergency for leech. This is a particularly dangerous situation. Take cover now. Uh, radar confirmed tornado. Again, there's no storm trackers on here that have confirmed it. We're just going off the debris ball signature. Locations other than leech include Jay, Kansas, Dodge, We've got Colcord, Oaks, Twin Oaks, and Lake, U Lake uh, Ucha State Park. Let's see, sometimes it'll give mile markers or roads when it comes to an interstate or main highway. Uh, not in this case. So again, the good news I have for you, even though it is going through leech and it is having a tornado emergency, the velocity signature on this is far weaker, more expansive than it was just a few moments ago. So I like seeing that. Doesn't mean it can't ramp up, but for the time being, it ramped down. Now, once it crosses over leaves, we're kind of back in that open farmland type area, and then we'll eventually head up toward, uh, looks like Cloud Creek, right up on Howie 59. And we'll see if that's anything happens. Yeah, it's, it's basically diminished. Uh, the complete couplet is gone, so the, the tornado has completely died as far as anything substantial. So at the worst case I would see here would be a funnel uh, cloud or a wall cloud. And right now I think that's the worst thing that's going to happen, uh, which is really good news for leech. But again, you treat every tornado, especially in a tornado emergency, as though it's on the ground and still doing damage, you know, and or it could happen any second. So guys out there just stay in your shelters on 412. It's also good for traffic because at nighttime, you know, those guys traveling the roadways, they got no idea what they're driving into. That's another helpful advice I have for you whenever you're in a situation like this and you see those storms ahead, just pull the app up on your phone. And if you're going, well, I'm driving, well, then pull the freaking car over for five seconds and look, why would you want to drive through a tornado? And your excuse is, well, because I was driving. Well, how about you stop driving? Take a look at the app, pull it up, make sure you're not driving into something, and then either carry on or exit or Maybe you want to back up, you know, I don't know, because of how close you are to the danger zone. But uh, sometimes you got to be smart in those situations, and today's modern technology allows you to have access to things you never would have had in the past. You might as well use it to your advantage. So good news is this storm is going to have to cycle and before it can produce another uh, tornado, because it's not going to happen for the next several minutes. Uh, once once a tornado down regulates and for it to up regulate again it's it takes quite a while i mean it, it can be i guess as soon as five minutes but more likely 10 and sometimes 15 or sometimes it doesn't do it at all a lot of things have to happen still plenty of shear though for this storm to feed into and it won't be in oklahoma much longer 
it's going to clip the northwestern corner of Arkansas and the southwestern uh, corner of um, Missouri. So you guys, a heads up out here, Maysville and Sulphur Springs, whatever's left of this supercell will be heading in your area, and that's going to be along the warm front. Um, and again, that's why this thing produced a tornado because it went right along the warm front. That's where it's been residing. Those warm front bounties are tricky. Uh, you can get something pop up and develop real quick in those situations. Let's see, that's out of range. So that's the first time I've seen this using my new software here for the, for the, uh, this uh, interface for the graphics. And even says Trandall Emergency on it. That is the first time I have ever seen that. But you can get 53 miles per hour outgoing from the radar and only 17 in incoming and it's very broad. Um, like I said, it's not uh, it's not a tight couplet, which we would need to see. So this is great news. Just in time, too. Man, it was biggest when it was going over those trees. Hopefully it didn't hit any farmhouses in between pegs and, you know, before it finally died. So if you're, looks like the tornado meso is getting just a bit north of the boundary. That's from the weather service. So if that happens, then this thing won't produce another tornado. It's done. What I was going to tell you is if you're watching from Oklahoma City, uh, we've just got some flash flooding as a potential. That's it. So uh, we're done with our main severe weather threat for the day. Uh, let's see, flash flooding report, water completely covering the roadway five miles west of Binger on Highway 152. Still get some good winds out of it. Uh, Mezzanet recorded 61 mile per hour wind gust not long ago. So like I said, some flash flooding here imminent for parts of the metro that notoriously get um, poor drainage or in a flood zone. So just know that's coming. And back up here in Northeast Oklahoma, this thing is dead still. Good riddance. That other uh, trade of warning was allowed to drop or expire or cancel one or the other. We there wasn't anything in there anyway. Um, I could let me see if I can take you back. How far back will this go? Uh, we won't go. It goes back to just about the time I got on live. Yeah, so here, here it is, there's some pegs. Okay, so it got on about this time, and this is where I, I looked at this one. Oh no, we got to get on here quick because uh, this thing's going to do something. And the next scan just blew up right over pegs, and the one after that got even stronger, and it had the debris ball. And that's where I wasn't for sure if it has the debris ball because it hit something in pegs or it hit something just east of pegs. Uh, and then it kind of just expanded, got stronger. Uh, the debris ball was, you know, hanging in there and getting larger. And uh, then it kind of got too large and everything kind of just expanded and the, the mezzo died and, and the trado died with it. And that's it. That's all she wrote. So it wasn't a long-lived one. I mean, it was, you know, long-lived in the term of, we're talking, oh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five miles in distance for the touchdown path, um, but not long lived as far as time. That was a very short amount of time over that distance. Uh, and if we look, uh, let's see, I'm gonna do this. And I'll do this too so you can see. 
So keep in mind from here to here is where this thing traveled. It missed a community here, it looks like. It did hit a little, uh, that might be a work site, uh, but otherwise it was all trees up in this area. A cup, it looks like there may have been a couple of farmhouses there, just a big patch of trees. Uh, let me turn this on just to make sure I have the path right. Yeah. Yeah, so we just went through all these trees. And like I said, there are, there's a little farmhouse here embedded within the trees. Uh, that's one. Uh, they took a direct path. Hopefully uh, they're okay. And then there was this... Uh, Looks like a work, I uh, call it a work site, but it looks like just a plowed area of land, nothing else on it. Good. So, wow, to only have one person in the path of that tornado, whew, that's incredible. Of all the places it could have formed, it formed there. And it missed this community over here to the east, and it missed this work site area over here to the east as well. Only thing I'm concerned about though is Pegs itself. Um, I mean, this thing formed right over town. So, everybody in this area, I have no idea how well they, they made out. So, that's the latest with that. We'll see if this kind of gets reorganized. Uh, let's see, cold cord in Kansas. Let's go up here. So the the uh, warm front, so I think it's Adair County, I have to go back and look, uh, comes in through here like so. So it's at that the county line there, those two. So let's take a look. So Ottawa, no, Delaware, not Adair, De uh, Delaware. All right, so the, the warm front is actually on these these two county lines here. So actually it kind of goes, uh, it goes something like this. Let's do this. Through like this, all right, which means this is now north. This area of circulation is now north of the warm front. So that storm is done. So if you guys live up here in northwest Arkansas, you can be thankful this thing went north of the warm front. It's off of it. So the potential for producing a tornado is greatly reduced. Uh, this this uh, storm would actually have to move due east and try to come back up with it here. And I just don't think that's going to happen. So that's good, but that's just the latest with that one. So let me go back into the metro Oklahoma City and just see what's coming in besides the heavy rain. I've got uh, a little over an inch and a half at my house. And we'll see how much more we get. Should get about four inches for some of you. Total. And so these some flash flood, you know, warnings for that. That's what the green is. Flash flood warning for Oklahoma County for Doppler radar estimating Let's see, already an inch plus has fallen. Um, rainfall mounts another two inches expected. So, like I said, up to four inches is a good call. We'll see if there's any wind or anything with this. Nothing on the severe side. Uh, let's see, wind speeds here, mm, they're in the 60s, so we can go back and check that out. I need to come down here and use this little guy so you can see it with your own eyes. Plot it on the screen for you. Ok, 
Okay. These are range folded over. So let me try another. There we go. So in Union City and Minko, you guys are going to get wind speeds. There's some up around 70 miles per hour. Now some of this won't be quite making it to the surface, but just goes to show you the potential is there for some wind speeds at least probably 60 miles per hour. Excuse me, throat's drying out. Been talking too much. All right. <clears throat> anyway, so so Virgin to Minko. Let's give some pockets here. Wind speeds in excess of 60 miles per hour, and like they said, the radar is going up close to 70. Uh, I can see what the warning wording says and see if they include that potential in it. Uh, let's see. So it says wind 60 in the wording. Let's see here. Let's do this. Uh, yeah, 60 miles per hour. There have to be some reports of something stronger than that. Like I said, the history uh, with the mezzanine had about 61 miles per hour, so that's a good call, which means not that not all of it's making its way to the surface, because there are going to be some spots, hot spots in here. This one at Burnus at 74. So if I get up closer to this, you can see it. That. So 76 miles per hour, 77. So again, some of this won't quite make it to the surface, but uh, gives the idea because the radar is measuring at uh, yeah 3,000 feet plus. So that's going to be more in the um, jet level versus the surface level where we live and breathe. So a lot of that won't be recognized at the surface. Okay, what else we want to do here? Let's get this thing off. Okay, let me pull up this other. <sighs> I'm so tired. Ah, tomorrow's gonna be a fun day at work. <laughs> oh, you can do it, Aaron. Just caffeinate yourself, you'll be all right. Okay, so coming into Chickasha, Pocasset, right along Highway 81. There's a little patch of wind. Let's see, this radar is estimating about 72 as well. It's up around 1,900 feet. So that's interesting. It was 76 miles per hour at 3,000 feet, 72 miles per hour at 2,000 feet. You probably get down to 67 miles per hour at 1,000 feet. Then you probably get to 62 miles per hour where we live and breathe. So you're stepping it down a notch. Okay, and I have to remind you, I, I went back just to kind of glance through some of these posts and comments and stuff, and most people will say something, but um, if you start asking me questions or whatever, um, and you yell at me, says, hey, go do this, unfortunately I won't be able to see it, because <laughs> I can't read Facebook comments and do this at the same time, uh, that wouldn't, I wouldn't get anything done. So uh, you'll have to be patient with me and wait for me to get around to you know whatever I find is of interest. Uh, sometimes it takes a minute because I'm focused on one thing and then when I'm done I can go do the other and I know sometimes you're like well do me now and that's why I give you my weather app because you can look at that fill in the blanks until I get there and that's kind of the purpose for it, it fills in the gaps because um, I can't cover every storm for everybody at the same time it's not possible 
So it's a way you can get your information for a minute while you wait. And then I'll give you an interrogation and tell you what to do with it. Yeah, this wind speed now is up around 60 miles per hour at Chickasha. It's doable. It's very strong though. That's damaging winds. All right, what else we got? So tornado warnings and stuff still continue, but they're nowhere near us. They're down here in northwest Texas, Haskell County, Snyder. It's all out west and near Abilene. And so, you know, this area will move to the northeast for the next several hours. Uh, they probably won't last forever. They're a long ways out there. And they're not moving very fast. that front by the way okay so the front does something like this and this and this I gotta tell you I gotta tell you remember last night was it last night I think it was last night I've lost count I've done so many lives it was last night and then it was this morning. No, it was like, so it was last night. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I got to get my brain wrapped around it. And I showed you those cam models, which showed how the rain up here would eventually continue to drive a cold pool south and shove the boundary south. So even though the boundary made it around I 40 or so, it ended up pushing it back south during the evening hours, taking the severe threat with it, but increasing the flash flooding from the metro with it. So what I showed you last night ended up turning out just perfect as far as the forecast goes. Um, but what it's done is it shoved any trade risk down into this area. Now we have to have a front, excuse me, a storm that rides along these boundaries to get a tornado at this point. You're not going to get them in here. Um, you're not going to get them up here. I mean, it's got to be right on the boundary. It's, I mean, it's, and we're talking a wiggle room of basically a mile or two, and that's it. Once it gets off of there, they die. You just saw that happen with your own eyes uh, east of Tulsa. Um, so that's how finicky this stuff is but so we'll look down here to see if there's any storms riding along that boundary zone so that's this guy here all right so front's doing something like this and need some more obs give me some more obs Think about like that. Actually, maybe more like this. I kind of drew, I drew that on the fly. Well, that was ugly. Let's try that again. <laughs> I'm going to go something like this. It's kind of wavy. There. That's the warm front. So, with that in mind, my focus would be on any uh, storm with an updraft riding into it. Now, you're looking, okay, what about this storm here? Well, this storm here is weak, puny, and the updraft is way down here in Duncan. Not here. So, that's not going to do any good. So, there's no threat for this one to do anything. Now, it would have to move northeast like this. And then by that time, crosses over in this region around Purcell, then we're talking we might watch for a potential tornado. But until then, that's not of concern at the moment. But that's the only storm left. So if I had to give you a concern storm to focus on, to pay attention to, it would be that one over the next hour. But not the latter part, you know, toward the end of the hour, not the beginning of the hour. Otherwise, just heavy rainfall here for Oklahoma City. Let's check out those winds again. Mm, it's 
Still up around 60. So if you had my weather app, it would trigger probably for a, a danger storm approaching. Uh, it might even give you a BTI rating on the lower end, say like a four, but only because it tripped a TBS um, in this area, just because of the wind. And there's still a shear in the atmosphere, so it would combine the two and probably give you a BTI rating on the low to mid scale. But basically it's just for straight line winds in this case. Okay, well, hmm. that storm here in the northeast, they still got it going. We can go and interrogate that and see what's new with it. And then I probably will sign off after that. Up to about two inches of rain now. All this happened in the end of that first wave and the beginning of this wave. So I can guarantee you none of it's soaking into the ground. It's going right into the street. It always sounds windier than it actually ends up measuring. It's the craziest thing. I swear going off my hearing I'd go, man I swear that's a 50 mile an hour wind. I'll come in here and look at my speed and it says like six. <laughs> I'm like that's not possible. There we go. 28. Oh yeah you're really cranking there buddy. Okay so back up here this one. I don't know what they're tracking up here. There ain't nothing left. There is nothing left up here this guy. I give me just gonna just let it sit and then just let it expire on its own. They're not going to cancel it early. Okay, so that's the end of that. All right, let me go back to the metro because I do hear that crazy loud wind even though my anemometer says it's no big deal. Let's see what I got with it. Okay. It may just be the fact that it's raining so hard. Because the radar is not impressive at all. For my house. Alright. Strongest wind still southwest of Tuttle to Amber to Chickasha to Pocasset. And down toward Nineco now. It is raining heavy though. Flood advisory coming for Oklahoma City area south of Norman uh, from the flash flood warning southward. So just kind of expanding the heavy rain concern. So a flash flood advisory is not the same as a flash flood warning. It just means, hey, you're ready for some potential flash flooding. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do is just kind of hang back here, watch a few things, do a few things, get caught up, and uh, if I still if I see another trader warning come out at you I'll come on for that or if we get just some crazy damaging widespread straight line wind something like that 80 miles an hour I'll probably come on for that but other than that just prepare for more heavy rainfall and like I said a little bit of flash flooding here across uh, Oklahoma City and surrounding areas of the metro it's just some more rain out here in southwest Oklahoma and this activity will travel to the north and east overnight but it is very weak and not nearly as strong as we've seen before. So it won't have as much of an impact as the rest did. 
Uh, we kind of went through our heavy rounds for the state through the midnight hour, uh, and then after that, things kind of shut down as far as the real widespread heavy stuff. And then from the midnight hour onward, um, you know, we'll we'll gradually transition this to the eastern half of the state. So by daybreak tomorrow, it's I-35 corridor, and then quickly moves east during the day. So eastern Oklahoma tomorrow afternoon might see some severe weather, far eastern counties on in Arkansas, um, just with some more daytime heating as the whole system kicks out. So that's the latest with that. All right, one more look here. See if I see anything crazy. Okay, good deal. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks again for your time. And uh, like I said, if I don't see you, that's a good thing. <laughs> it's always a good thing when you don't see me live, trust me. All right, be safe, take care, good night.